little bit of the back there, mate. Just a little bit of the back. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's nice. Little bit, little bit down on the left there. A little bit down on the. Oh yeah, that's better. That's better. Ooh, ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Just there. Just there. Just there. Oh, 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 hold on. No, 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 no. There, 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 there. Oh. Okay, I'll let you do your thing, mate. Oh. <laughs> you can see, you almost see his undercarriage reaching up and sort of like doing that. <laughs> Usually the dirtiest part. Hey, folks, how you doing? Um, wow, I'll tell you what, there we go then. I'll tell you what, I've got my work cut out today. Uh, Rob, by the way, big up the... Um... Yeah, the Brisbane crew. Big up the Brisbane crew, uh, Robbo. I don't know if they heard that, but... Uh... Yeah, like I say, folks, I've got my work cut out. It's supposed to be overcast. Um, but there's a big blue patch right above me. Uh, some would say, yeah, that's a great thing. Um, but for me, I'll show you. It's the haze. I mean, I know we're having a lazy Sunday afternoon. Nah, but we're not having a hazy Sunday afternoon. Look at this. Still get some pretty spectacular climb outs, but we need the clouds to come back. Got no need to worry. Hello, missus. Poor old United get a bit of stick these days, aren't they? The media's really jumping over aviation in general, isn't it? You know, even the, um, you know, the ones who know sod all about aviation or engineering or the technical side of things, just getting their oar in, aren't they? Digging their eels in and talking a load of old stuff. Um, but, you know, if there are flaws in United's maintenance, uh, et cetera, et cetera, mind that. <laughs> uh, then uh, so be it, they'll uh, maybe need a bit of a shake up. You never know, but uh, I find it quite an, uh, interesting, isn't it? Something what? Sending out the Trent. He's going left, this one. See, he still gets him. Nice. Oh, we've got an A380 pushing back. Three of them, is it? Okay, watch around about another Dreamliner. Saudi are possibly positive right there's your gear around about three seconds as the wheels leave the ground is your gear up command positive rate meaning that they are uh, climbing at the um, desired rate speed and altitude or, or not so much altitude but uh, attitude yeah! Show us your belly, girl! Yeah! Oh, we're getting some... We're getting some floofage, which is quite surprising, really. I didn't think the uh, atmospherics were ripe for it, but we're getting a little bit. Oh, wow, a 350 as well. Hold on a minute, let me just... There's another one coming out, it's a triple this time. Okay, the cloud base is quite low. That's a good thing, you know. Wow. Triple 
up to her and she's already in the clouds. Go on, girl! Really? Well, the other end. Hearing reports, somebody saying of a uh, a United was it was it the United Dreamliner? Oh, they are not getting any luck at the moment, are they? Oh my God! Better keep quiet, otherwise that'll end up on the front pages tomorrow morning. interesting article this morning I don't know if it's an early uh, April Fool's thing or what like look look legitimate to me US company oh, this is it is good yeah yeah Quite quick, I would have thought. Cloud bases, what, six, seven hundred feet, something like that, maybe? Let's just watch for her to literally disappear. Here it goes, here it goes. Still flapping its wings. I'm sure, I'd imagine that anything in the wake of an aeroplane probably would flap its flipping wings, wouldn't it? You know, dead or alive. Oh, mate, what is going on here? Canada. I think it's the, uh, is it the Canadian arm of, uh, of Airbus that are building the A220 and I'm hearing that apparently uh, some union issues there or something. But yeah, this, uh, nice, this, um, oh, look at him, he's blown that, uh, he's blown that cloud out, look at that, wow, he's going to hit that one as well, watch, look, look at that, he's sliced the big chunk out of that one, look at that, look at it, yeah, I think we might see a little bit more of that with this broken cloud conditions here at London Heathrow. Of the Dreamline, isn't it? Hell's Bells um, A350 pilot with British Airways due out at what was it, GP? 5:15 this afternoon with uh, one of our members on board the aircraft. Member's husband, sorry, on board the aircraft. Right up. Yeah. Anyway, this uh, this um, this company in America planning to build the world's largest aeroplane um, for one purpose. This is this is what I don't quite understand. If I was on the board, I'd be like, uh, "You sure about this, mate? Aren't you limiting your uh, potential for this world's largest aeroplane in terms of freighter?" Planning to develop it just purely to transport wind turbine blades. 787 10, I think, in it. No, it's a 900, is it?
Um, yeah. Uh, they're developing, he's developing, or they're developing this plane that's, it's, it's huge. It's, it's like the size of a football pitch, as people sometimes describe many things, you know. Um, but um, it's huge, it's humongous. But the only thing, I mean, some of these new turbine blades are like 300 odd feet long. Um, and of course, the difficulty is transporting them on, um, on highways and byways. Um, understandably so. Uh, there are helicopters for those sorts of things, heavy lift helicopters, aren't they? Because I don't think the blades weigh that much. Um, but my, my, my question there is that, you know, he was interviewed and all that. Uh, yeah, so um, he said we're developing the aircraft for one reason, and that is to transport uh, oversized, you know, um, oh, hold on a minute, oversized uh, turbine blades for the industry to uh, so that they can get them to the um, for, for easier transport because of the, the the restrictions that they have on the road networks. And my question, hello. I thought you said something. Um, and my question to that is, uh, okay, but what about when you get the aircraft to the um, to the uh, the destination, as in the 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 the, the, the country of dest, you know, of, of of let's just say, for instance, you know, some, um, you still got to get the blade off the off the plane and somehow transport it somewhere because it's not going to be a long enough they're not going to uh, uh, purpose uh, custom build runways um, for um, for these for these aircraft um, especially if it's just a one off operation you know uh, so they've still got to get the blade to the so if it lands in Brazil for example yeah great get the plane to Brazil but it's still got to get the blade from Brazil to the um, uh, to the uh, uh, its final destination have you not so what what have, have they thought about that <laughs> oh yeah you think about that well, I cancel that it's one of Jerry's silly ideas isn't it <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so that wasn't a um, that wasn't a uh, 380 coming out then. That wasn't an Emirates 380 coming out. Then. No. no, no. I must have uh, been mistaken. Nice, a Saudi, a triple seven. Off to Riyadh, no doubt. We have three eighties in town at the moment. Good afternoon, folks. How are you? Are you all right? How was your week? Hope it was good. Of course, where did we go? Went to Schiphol, didn't we? Last week, with all our friends. Got some good feedback about that as well. Thank you. Did Cop Twist. Now I remember Did Cop Twist. He's a returning member. Welcome back, Did Cop. has got a star as well. Um, welcome back, sir. Alan Burden is also a returning member. Welcome back, Alan. We've got Sam Hitchcock, who's a brand new member. Uh, welcome, Sam. Get involved in the chat, folks. If you're a new member, please don't hesitate in asking questions. There is no such thing as a silly question on Big Jet TV, I can tell you. Um, any question uh, either sparks a debate or, uh, or or just gets a general discussion going we love it um, even if it's 
if I don't have the answer, somebody on here will. So get involved uh, if you're new. Deborah Davies gifted a membership. Thanks, Deborah. Kedin PJs, ooh, 380. River Flame, great week of Big Jet TV viewing. Well, um, it is here uh, a bank holiday weekend in the UK. So, um, gonna probably come out and do something with you guys tomorrow. Whether it's garden cam from my back garden uh, with the cat, uh, just chilling out and watching the departures. But I tell you what, um, oh look at this, they'll be giving each other a wave, wouldn't they? Hello, my friend. Hello. Is it Shalom? Uh, Muhammad Bayat is a returning member. Welcome back, Muhammad. Sorry for the repeat. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the first flight of Boom's XB1 demonstrator, Stuart Watson. I, I, I did discuss this the other day, Stuart, uh, and that is that it's, it is very much a demonstrator. It is a platform that is resembles does not resemble the x uh, the, the boom um a uh, 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 platform in any way shape or form it is just the developers uh, the f i don't know if it's the airframers or whether it's the engine manufacturers whether they're testing uh, the engine uh whether they're testing the sustainability of the aircraft possible materials and things like that certainly not aerodynamics at this stage because again like I said it um, it actually resembles more of a, an old school aircraft that I remember from back in the old days um, you know like the Starfighter or whatever they call it um, so no I don't, I don't know I don't know um, it's something that um, thank you Steph just gifted five big jet TV memberships thank you it's, it is one of those things that sort of like, you know, people get excited about it. Uh, it certainly is not, again, I have to say, um, uh, as I've said all along, it's not the return of Concorde. Uh, talking of Concorde, BA gave her a wash the other day. Uh, I don't know who it was, whether it was uh, just, um, whether it was uh, uh, guys and girls from the, um, from the, from the ground teams. It's okay, she's still weeping a little bit, look, and uh, I'm, I'm guessing that they could only do so much probably with the, um, the long reach scrubbers and stuff like that that they're using here. Um, it's always very difficult. You see, that, that grubbiness that that guy's cleaning off there is, you know, it's relatively new compared to what you would find on Concord. It's sort of like the kind of grubbiness that's gotten into the the paint and really uh, it stained it more than anything else whereas these are pa are, are, are paint are, are cleaned uh, a lot more often throughout the year than um it's getting a big old wash in it when they finished is he gonna like flap his uh, flap his wings like a dog when it comes out of the bath Terrible laughing at your own jokes, Jerry. Stop it. <laughs> I just visualise it. That's all. Uh, but yeah, uh, the boom is 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 more or less a sort of like a jumped up uh, a private jet. Really, it's not going to be carrying anything more than fifty passengers, I believe. Uh, those passengers are going to be obviously surrounded in in, in pure luxury and comfort. Um, it's not going to be. Uh, us lot who are going to be jumping on it any any time soon that's for sure it is literally um, for the very fortunate and yeah it'll be uh, flying across doing transatlantic flights and all that in very little time that is of course they've got to certify it you know um, uh, they're, they're looking at ways of reducing the boom, aren't they? I think um, these guys, as well as other people, of course. Gav Bassey, welcome to Premium. Gav is a brand new member. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a tricky one, really, to, to comment on. Um, is he returning, is he? Sorry, Gaz Bassey. Uh, Gaz 
Sorry, Gav Bassey is a returning member. My apologies, Gav. Uh, Russell Webb is also a returning member. Uh, Manda is a new member. Welcome, Manda. Pammy Gambo, really enjoyed Big Jet TV. I'm leaving, learning so much. Nervous fly, but love watching planes. Thank you. Well, I tell you what, um, Pammy, don't be in any way. Um, this we've had so much good feedback from people about how much more they are um, confident about flying now compared to how they were before they watched the storm show for example <laughs> because it really does bring out the, the skill um, of the pilots and the calmness of the cabin crew as well folks don't forget you know while we're all going oh 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 like that you don't get the, the cabin crew doing that and they might be doing it in their head but um, they need to show calmness and um, you know, uh, put you put put us all at uh, at ease, as is the calm voice of the pilot. That'll be for paint, won't it? Rotating through his shadow. Raptor X, Raptor X, folks, uh, g regularly gives uh, updates on uh, arriving and departing airport uh, aircraft. That was a 320 to Oslo in Norway. Jason Jones uh, hydrogen uh, aircraft. You know what? I think, um, I'll be honest with you, I think hydrogen powered jets will be around maybe even before Boom flies. Um, because the when I say jets, I mean hydrogen powered aircraft. Uh, they, they are already flying, to be honest with you. Electrical power, this is that we're talking about. When you talk about hydrogen, we're talking about uh, hydrogen being mixed with air, which creates electricity which then creates the power. Yeah, so uh, you know the 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 the, the, um, the hydrogen um, uh, philosophy is one which is um, which has been gathering pace over the last uh, couple of years, really. Um, and to be honest with you, when you actually look at the the science of it, and trust me, I was absolutely useless at school, didn't get any qualifications, but even I understand the um, the way in which it works. You're gonna get your, uh, you're gonna get your, um, your, your, your know-it-alls, aren't you? You know, like, oh, hydrogen, oh, blimey, that's not very safe, is it? Well, obviously, you know, they are containing it in a safe environment. Um, you know, uh, for, for aviation fuel is just as, uh, in, in, you know, just as um, potent. Nice, seven sixty-seven. Um, nice. trajectory on this route outbound for the US westbound stuff full 180 degree turn more or less yeah so the uh, the hydrogen
I'm a big fan of it. I've got to be honest with you. I'm a big fan of the whole hydrogen thing, uh, electrical power. Uh, and, and of course, uh, it's a long, long way off in terms of um, uh, large aircraft like these that you're looking at. It, it will be many, many years before anything like that. Uh, there is the option that I, that I mentioned quite some time ago, and actually Airbus, believe it or not, I'm, I'm serious here, and I mean emotionally, folks, uh, that Airbus actually wrote an article on it about um, the potential in the future for um, for hydrogen uh, uh, powered um, hybrid jets, where you would still retain. The, the 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 jet power uh, of these engines that you see here but they would be hybrid engines so you would use all of the power uh, it's quite simple uh, the, the 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 takeoff obviously requires a, a serious amount of forward inertia doesn't it you need to get the whole thing moving and that power on the climb uh, to to power a big airliner like this would would require a significant amount amount of you know electrical force and power and torque and that kind of thing something that would seriously undermine the, the whole business of being able to carry freight and passengers and so on and so forth you actually it would become a negative as far as i'm concerned however um the opportunity once the aircraft is at uh, full cruise oh no one told me about that i could have caught her coming in now you know what i think she's probably i think she's probably they're going to turn that round. Oh, have they saying it on the... Oh, okay. um, yeah, the potential for the future with, um, with aircraft that are, that are, that are, that are hybrid powered, uh, so the takeoff roll, the whole thing from gate um, to uh, up to the cruise. Now, once they're in the cruise, Once they're in the cruise, there is the potential um, because if you've, especially if you've got a tailwind, you know, like 160 knots or something crazy like that, um, you'll power back the engines anyway. Um, but it just means that you could possibly switch to the hybrid power or the 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 the, the, um, the electrical powered engines or hydrogen slash uh, air making electricity powered engines uh, that being the case um, you're looking at the opportunity of flying for say six or seven hours without jet a1 like across the Atlantic for example or to whatever destination it might be so I would say that that would be the future potentially um, of hybrid powered jets of course, the smaller aircraft, you know, your uh, your little ATRs, um, the Q400s, that or 200s or whatever it might be. Even um, oh, is that Pokemon just touch it, touch it down? Didn't they sell? Wasn't it Pokemon Game Boy? Wasn't it the Pokemon Game Boy that uh, sold like 278 million? It was just huge. It was a huge. I loved my game more, man. Well, all I played on it really was um, was um, Tetris. <laughs> oh, and I'll tell you what. Uh, the local um, people. You're going to have to. You're going to have to go with me on this one. Next time you're in the Shell garage or something, you see the Costa machine. Sometimes there's a little bit of an alarm going. And you tell me if you ever played. Um, um, Super Mario. Um, there, the machine has got the same tone as that. It doesn't play the tune, but it's got the same tone. Very electronic early days of, um, of you know, um, uh, technology. Look at that 
big droopy undercarriage man how long this takes to um, to retract compared to other undercarriage bang there's a big noise in it is wow she's going up steep man serving the drinks already Yeah, so the question of the future of flight in terms of, you know, what's being developed and, uh, and what, what, what the future looks like. Um, it is a, um, I, I reckon they're going to, I reckon they're going to turn that Cathay Pacific jet round pretty quick, you know. She's going to go out, um, she's going to go, she might even be our, co our close out, Jilly, you never know. Twenty degree climb. Thank you. Another Saudi triple seven off to Riyadh. Lady Hull saying thank you, Lady Hull. Vico Husman's liking the three thirty. Yes, yeah, a great old school jet in it. It's the old school one, that is. Um, We have to figure out pure hydrogen power, figure out how to get hydrogen from not... Hydrogen is the most available uh, 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 um, thing on the planet, isn't it? Hydrogen? Coal? Hydrogen from coal? What's going on? It's the first I've heard of it. I think, I think you'll find that hydrogen is a, is a highly... Um, you know, um, readily available commodity, far more so than, yeah. Is he talking about the extraction process or something? I don't, I don't understand that. Obviously done quite a lot of reading up on it. And uh, from what I've read from the professionals, nice plumage girl, nice. From what I've read about it, it's um, it's a very sort of like, you know, um, good option. Um, in terms of, you know, as far as domestic stuff goes, local and domestic flights uh, with the ATRs and all that that's a that's a that's an easy one to call because they are they are propeller driven anyway turbo props um, and uh, uh, to be able to they are already um, uh, uh, um, combining hydrogen with jet a1 powered sort of like hybrid engines for the for the ATRs and that kind of thing ATR and Airbus working very very uh, diligently on that together um, but uh, you know uh, it's and that is just literally on the on the on the you know i mean even if you were able to cut you know if you were able to 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 produce a, an aircraft a power plant that was able to be um transitioned to an aircraft which they're saying would be an easy transition with the atr they've already tested these things in the labs and all that kind of stuff and it's been successful already um Uh, major energy manufacturers, General Electric, um, Pratt and Whitney, Rolls Royce, all those guys are uh, investing millions of pounds in the uh, in the future of their engine technology. Um, and of course, that is you know the plan is. I mean, if you if you pre if you present something that uh, like 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 what um, uh, um, Qantas have done with their current 737. 
um, classic fleet, well not classic, but uh, you know, they're, they're NG next uh, generation uh, 737, 700s and 800s, uh, by putting the split scimitar winglet on it, um, saves them around about 2% overall, I think, from the other winglet, um, the other winglet style, the sharklet style. Um, now that, just that saving on its own, um, over a period of a year uh, is humongous, not just to the airline, but also uh, to the passengers, you know, uh, the traveling public uh, who get cheaper flying, and also uh, to the, more, more, more importantly, I have to say, to the environment in reducing um, their, their footprint as much as they can, because it's already, you know, a relatively small footprint in terms of the rest of the world. You know, you're talking about shipping, uh, vehicles, you know, cars, um, trucks, big ships, all that kind of malarkey. As Stuart Ross, JCB have done a lot of work with hydrogen. You can now buy JCB hydrogen equipment. There you go, you see. JCB, fair play. British company. About the only one left, isn't it? Oh no, they're owned by Germans. Aren't they? profile on the Dreamliner. Nice. Oh, Jeff White. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff has gifted 10 memberships. I think it's a big discussion point, the whole hydrogen um, uh, 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 subject. Look, you're going to get your naysayers. You're going to get people who have been informed incorrectly, read the wrong news, all that kind of stuff by, um, by, by people who don't know what they're talking about. Um, uh, but, but the best thing you can do is do your own research and um, listen to the people who know what they're talking about <laughs> and not the bloke down the pub. Oh, yeah, 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 I've got one of them hydrogen things. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, the old house, yeah, yeah, we've got the old house uh, done on it, yeah. Yeah, got to, uh, yeah, yeah, cut the pipes. <laughs> Steve, he delivers the hydrogen once a week. Lovely, isn't it? There's someone who's really done their research, and that's Screaming Emu, folks, one of our uh, our um, in-house pilots. Per the United Nations, as at the end of 2021, okay, I don't know if they've got any more recent figures, but um, almost 40% of global hydrogen production is from natural gas. Okay, so uh, from natural gas, wouldn't that be a good thing? Um, 27% from coal, well they'll get rid of that because, you know, um, I don't think coal reserves are, uh, are that. 22% uh, from oil as a byproduct, and only around 4% comes from electrolysis. So, interesting. Well, we'll have to look further on that one. Yeah, fair point, Jordan Charlie, about the JCP uh, hydrogen-powered machinery. Um, well, I, I, I would imagine JCP have got a lot of money and invested a lot in that product, so they would have, in, they would have probably um, presented an infrastructure uh, alongside the vehicles. They wouldn't just say, "There you go, mate." Oh, well, how do I fuel, refuel it? Oh, I don't know. You just, um, I don't know. Just phone someone. <laughs> They're not going to develop something without having the backup of the infrastructure like electrical vehicles with charging points and stuff like that. But anyway. Um, Faye, is it blustery? No Faye. Not really. Well, all I'm saying is, uh, regardless of whether they're, they're, they're you know, Regardless of the pros and the cons, I'm just embracing the whole uh, um, hydrogen power option, especially um, for the future of... Um... Mind that? 
the future of um, regional, you know, flights like you know Heathrow to to to, to um, Edinburgh, that kind of thing. You know, um, local regional stuff in a ruck. You're in a rack, you gotta get out of it, out of it. Let's see how quick they uh, unhitch that door. L1 is open. 747 dash 8. Sounds like an old trip. JCB also owns right busing are heavily invested in electric and hybrid systems. Yeah, you've got to be, haven't you? You've got to be heavily invested in. You've got to. I mean, that's the future, isn't it? No one's going to sort of like right. No, I'm not going to do electrical anymore. Right. No, no, no. I'm not interested in hygiene anymore. No. The, you know. The, obviously, you know. I think at the end of the day, I know there's a lot of people um, with what they the research that's done and all that. But Airbus and uh, other air framers are obviously taking the right direction. Wow! Look at that turn. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful phenomenon and that absolutely spectacular. You never get bored of seeing that kind of a phenomenon. Nice big bank of cloud, look. Come on boys and girls, let's get that uh, main deck cargo door open and uh, he could be, is he picking anything up? Highly unlikely, I would have thought. Rose there seem to be some cans down there, didn't there? Uh, more likely dropping off, I would have thought. Faye Senior Cafe Cargo is a beaut. Thomas Gilby Gaming and Train Spotting. Fly SSC, you see, that's 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 the kind of thing Fly SSC. You've obviously read somewhere, or somebody said to, "Oh yeah, gonna, oh that's a, got a really big, good chance of explosion." Well, not if it's contained. Obviously, we've come a long way since the Hindenburg. <laughs> oh, the humanity! we go again you see with this whole flipping hazy again Sunday afternoon nah. Dan man blood flame raptor what plane is that cargo plane uh, it's a 747 blood flame raptor really I, 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 I find it surprising that you're asking but uh, it's a 747 dash 8 um, Maybe you don't know, I don't know, but I'm sure you've been around long enough, haven't you, to see that as being a jumbo jet? Uh, maybe it is just because of the hazy conditions that we have here at London Heathrow. Yeah. Oh, nice and clean now, look. Let it out in the garden for a big shake. Lady Hole, American Triple Center, LAX third in the queue to take off. 
And there it is. Uh, no, I wouldn't say there it is. Uh, have I missed it? Is that an old... No, there is. looks like the back end of one, maybe. Kev Miller, good afternoon to you. Captain Kirk Island. Sarah Louise, Kathy Williams, uh, Karen Novnagel has gifted a membership. Thank you, Karen. Europel Palpatine, the Mythbusters did a great episode on hydrogen and, and the Hindenburg and how it was coating they used as the main reason for fire. Yes. Did I say that? Did I say something else? Did I say the Hindenburg? Maybe I said something else. The, 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 the I don't know. I said the wrong one which isn't a surprise to be honest with you. Sarah Louise. Yeah, just a quick shout out, folks. Um, I know he's watching. He's right next to the TV now, isn't he? Martin, happy 70th birthday, my friend. Fair play for getting there. Um, may there be many, many more years of you uh, enjoying your birthday so happy birthday Martin now I'm gonna get about 400 other people can you stand in front of the camera and not say happy birthday to Steve 1.21 gigawatt gigawatts Gordon Freeman say what's that is that the power yeah I know it's an electrical power isn't it gigawatts oh actually I think um so these jet engines are also cranky. Oh, the Hindenburg. Yeah, it was the Hindenburg. I'm pretty sure it was. Some geezer. Petrol is a dwindling resource. Indeed, uh, some geezer, but not only that, it's not a case, it's, well, yeah, I mean, it, it is a dwindling resource, um, you know, but we're talking about many, many hundreds of years, probably. However, we want to get to um, a, a, a far more uh, um, cleaner uh, mode of transport uh, before, before, um, before all that runs out. I don't think it's really a race between the two is it uh, blue sky you cut me off youtube cut me off oh, okay blue sky good afternoon alternative ways of producing electricity which they are doing uh, I would switch to an electric car how is that related to the to the car I don't know is it is the majority of electricity still comes from oil um, there's three elements there that sort of like in my book don't quite uh, match up um, it's obviously the batteries uh, the the, the, the the, the manufacturing process of the batteries is something that's still under question, isn't it? In terms of the uh, the, the, the the harvesting and farming of the um, of the of the raw materials of batteries, it's it's becoming better and better all the time, you know. Um, but but it still needs to be a a, a clean a, as clean as possible. Um, and look, at the end of the day. We're all using products that have a, um, a paper trail of, of, of um, you know, a manufacturing processes that are either uh, highly unlikely to be t totally green. Um, you know, everything that you, uh, even, the, even the, the, the fruit that you eat because you, it's nice and healthy, it's, it's being transported, isn't it? It's being transported either by roads, by a big smelly truck, or it could be an electrical truck, it could be a hybrid truck, who knows? But at some point in time, along that road, there is, um, there is, a, there is um, a fossil fueled um, process which uh, it, we're trying to eliminate at the end of the day. We can't just, you know, uh, criticise 
the, um, the, 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 what people are trying to do, uh, we should embrace it and say, yeah, okay, brilliant. Well, you know, just keep going. Be strong. Look at the haze, man. Look at the haze. It's crazy, man. Looks like, looks like smoke, doesn't it? Graham, hasty. Love it when they fly into the clouds, yes. Indeed, floofage. We call it floofage. Um, other people have adopted that as well, which is a little bit annoying sometimes when, you know, blimey. Um, but anyway, whatever. Yeah, folks, we're uh, we're nearing, <laughs> hopefully, completion. I'm not going to give any dates on this, and I never would, never did do anyway. But we got. I did mention some exciting news potentially for last week. That's now overridden into possibly next week, and then probably into the following week because the process of what we're trying to do involves a lot, a, a lot of um, uh, 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 hoops, let's say, uh, to jump through. Uh, but trust me, I'm doing it for you lot. <laughs> um, if it works, you're going to be absolutely bamboozled. Rico, is it me or are the wingtips higher than the top of the fuselage? Very interesting. Well, on the A, on the 767 with the winglets, um, with those huge sharklets, yes, 11 feet above the wing, especially when she's in flight. amazing thing and a lot of, a lot of times you don't really see it but the uh, wing tip itself I mean even the a380 believe it or not uh, stretches or flexes upwards of 13 feet um, it's incredible it's designed to do that um, but it, it again it's just an amazing you know um, thing to behold especially when you're flying on the aircraft when you you see and witness the uh, the wings uh, flexing up see look how um, look how drooped the, uh, the 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 wings are on that uh, a380 folks look at the far outboard sections of the wings and look how uh, how bent they are downwards obviously there's a lot of fuel uh, imagine that you know you, you you fill up your average bucket of water yeah it's heavy in it <laughs> it's not you know just a bucket of water well you're talking about the potential for somewhere in the region of 
you know, 80, 90 tonnes uh, of fuel on those wings, obviously um, uh, 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 spread throughout the wing uh, for centre of gravity and, you know, efficiency. And sometimes the A380 also does have the option of fuel tanks in the rear stabilisers as well. Uh, so does the uh, 747, I think. Um, but it is, uh, it is amazing that when that aircraft takes off literally uh, as it as it as it becomes an airplane um, as soon as it's the, the the aircraft is aerodynamically working hundred percent you'll see those wings flex up around about 13 feet believe it or not Simon and I loving the rear view of the a380 the curve of the wings well again like I say that uh, that wing will uh, obviously the during wind tunnel tests um, they would have uh, um, worked with a, a wing that was well you know they would have had to have created a, a wing on the model that flexed as well I would imagine he's doing a uh, full and free check now see elevators making sure that all the flight surfaces on the aircraft are uh, are uh, reacting as they should do uh, rudder check there's your left side speed brakes right side speed brakes and they have to check those definitely because of the fact that during the takeoff roll there's your rudder check during the takeoff roll um, they may need those uh, ground spoilers um, in the event of a uh, rejected takeoff <laughs> did cop twist amazing the other day in the show the 747 landing before the 380 and the difference in the wings I just found it fascinating and still do I can never get enough of it you know uh, to see the 747's wings literally as they're hitting those those barriers of air you know uh, uh, different wind speeds and directions and all that kind of stuff especially in the gusty conditions you could see the the, the, the wings reacting um, that's nothing to do with the pilots folks that's literally the aircraft just reacting to the um, to, 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 to the dynamics of the wind conditions on the flex I'm talking about Tony Bruce has gifted five memberships thank you Tony Wadders good afternoon screaming we don't test spoilers or speed brakes you're seeing spoiler ons being tested yeah yeah that's anal isn't it I mean at the end of the day it's the same flight surface isn't it they are are they not ground spoilers uh, uh, you know the ailerons obviously are also in the in the uh, the split ailerons on the A380 I'm not arguing with with a pilot here folks I'm just this is what I've learned obviously uh, the split ailerons on the A380 the the mo moving part the aircraft that controls the mo the part that controls the movement of the aircraft left and right uh, when it's in the air obviously um, is is um, is a is a is a, um, is a flight surface that has two usages uh, ground spoilers when she's on the ground and um, and aileron uh, sorry and uh, well partially they work with the outboard ailerons as well but on the descent you'll see those you'll see those um, especially when you're at the top of the descent sometimes they may ask you to slow um, bring the speed of the aircraft down as a result of that you might bring your 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 your, um, your speed brakes up called speed brakes I guess uh, and then the ground spoilers um, which spoil the flow of air to bring the aircraft to a stop but also you do see them ever so slightly working with the um, with the onboard computers alongside the ailerons just to sort of like um, uh, control that descent but also you know in, in terms of uh, uh, maneuvering the aircraft but also um, uh, to to uh, minimize the, the twist in the wing as well because of course the Airbus apart from the A300 does not have uh, flapperons as we call them um, which uh, are the um, low speed ailerons uh, on the 777 um, and the outboard ailerons which are the, the ailerons so that's why they call them flapperons because they're sort of like a mix between a flap and an aileron so uh, you kind of get that um, usage in terminology across the jet fighter families as well
John Singleton. You pen pen PP. Freddie Lake. Yeah, it looks like fog, doesn't it? Hazy. 380. Making its way out. Yeah, still not... Um, we're definitely going to do Anchorage in April, folks. Rico has gifted a membership. Thanks, Rico. We've got Tony Bruce also gifting five memberships. Thanks, Tony. And sometimes, even on the um, even on the the climb out, in very blustery conditions, you might see. Oh, well. Uh, I see the word spoiler on that Emu was mentioning there. That makes sense, doesn't it? Spoiler ons. Um, whilst they're on the ground, uh, whilst they're in the air, I'm guessing they're. Uh, well, yeah. The speed brakes. Do they. Uh... I guess they do say, don't they? Speed brake set. And they. Uh, Engines growling, Faye. Um, and they uh, also D cell, isn't it? Not all pilots call D cell on the uh, on the um, on touchdown, do they? Um, some of them do, some of them don't. I don't know. If screaming in, you might be able to uh, um, enlighten us on that. Alf and Sue has gifted a membership. Thank you, Alf and Sue. My sister flew to Boston about a month ago. Did cop twist. Let's all hail the baby Jesus. Um, Probably the biggest aviation. Uh, Randy Bushbound. Jilly, see that? Is anyone having issues with paid membership? Blah blah blah. Nothing that we're aware of, Randy. Mark Ashell, can I buy the green jacket that Jerry's wearing in the store? I think so. I think so. Is that right, Julie? It's in the store, isn't it? Bomber jacket. Takes me back to the old days when I was uh, wearing my Dr. Martins. Uh, but it still has a modern twist to it, you see. Savannah Steam. Oh, Savannah Steam. Oh. Uh, Dimitri Spiru, any plans to go to uh, Toulouse? Well, yes. Glimpse of the Emirates 350. Well, I have to say, it was. Uh, wow. Mm. Has the tail been done? It was a toss up between Schiphol and, and um, Toulouse last week, folks. Um, but yeah, yeah, Toulouse is on the cards, man. Um, Toulouse is always better when they're on 09 operations here at London Heathrow anyway. Mm -hmm. 
so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Maybe get to losing before we head to Anchorage. Robert Dean, good afternoon, Andy P. BBLLB. Max Pilot in the house. Randy, you must have obviously not been logged in. That's what we're assuming at this stage. Um, easy to do. PP, thanks, mate. When is the Emirates 350 coming out, Josh Owen? I don't know. Well, I mean, it can't be that long, can it? Well, we might actually hear a speed brake armed light BBLLB like that. Talk as much as you like about speed brake armed light. Does, is that speed brake armed light to, uh, an indication that the speed brakes are armed for when you touch down? Is that an auto speed brake or is that uh, at some, some aircraft obviously have the manual input for speed brakes on touchdown? Um, I've seen, uh, I remember seeing the 747 doing that. Andy Kinsman Moore is a brand spanking new member. Welcome Andy with an I. Andy Finley, when I hear Anchorage, I get a tingle. Gary D, 32 year old, 767, coming after the Turkish Airlines. And this is Turkish now. So this is a 32 year old 767, folks. Wow. And it's great to see them still around, isn't it? Tony Bruce has gifted five memberships. Thanks, Tony. This is an old um, Trent powered. A330, look at this big old undercarriage, how long it takes to get, look, see that puff of dust there that you saw, that's from the um, auto brake systems, stopping the wheels from turning, um, because you do not want those wheels turning when you, um, when you bring that undercarriage up, because it wrecks the bearings and also um, creates heat. it'll also create um, quicker wear and tear on the components the wheel components themselves you know especially the bearings uh, hub assemblies that kind of stuff 767 on a roll here we go old school you know the score Anthony Teal has gifted five memberships thank you mate. now look at the winglets folks we were talking about just now 11 feet and yes it does uh, reach over the top of the uh, fuselage now the wings are flexed as well. flying it out oh no man we're gonna miss it ah oh we're gonna miss the last flight of Air Malta is it Air Malta and then the new uh, the new management airline has, 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 has actually flown their first operation haven't they I believe kidding PJs quickly saw somebody asking there about the, the camera that we use. Uh, Panic, one of the biggest, one of the most asked questions on Big Jet TV, I'd say, is crazy, isn't it? Um, uh, is, is what camera do we use? Uh, very simple, you'll be glad to hear. Uh, nothing big and fancy. Um, Panasonic HX, uh, VX1, HC VX1, isn't it? Now, 
I think that's it, you know. Now they might be waiting for some freight that's come off another jet that's going to be um, that's going to be going on there. But from what I can see. said uh, she has had a bit of a clean um, but only by the looks of it she hasn't had a deep scrub because uh, obviously the, 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 the front end of the aircraft has had a good old wash but they didn't get onto the wing so uh, she's had um, sort of like just a, a, a spray wash um, you can see the wings are pretty grubby still um, it's a difficult one man you know uh, I, I did mention to uh, I did mention to Heathrow um, in hoping that and, and congratulating and thanking them, should I say, not congratulating them, but thanking them for um, for giving Boab a wash. Um, and that hopefully maybe one day uh, there may be some collaboration between Heathrow and, um, and British Airways and the general Heathrow um, network that uh, they may um, do something with Boab, but I, 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 wouldn't, um, I wouldn't raise your hopes on it uh, because it's obviously, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, an airport that, um, you know, needs to maintain its bottom line, let's just say, um, because they have shareholders at the end of the day um, and need to be uh, making profit, um, which is understandable, you know, we need to keep it going. Um, and in order to do something with Concorde would involve creating a whole new department, uh, staffing it, um, uh, 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 more land, uh, which would have to go through multiple, multiple um, sort of like regulatory planning permission or all that kind of stuff. And of course, let's face it, land is at a premium at any airport, at any airfield. Uh, if, if you're in the United States, it's a different thing, but uh, you know, these uh, modern aircraft using modern ceramic brakes and carbon this and lightweight materials she's still growling my next WBs go on Sam Scream though, she might be light. I think she's light. Sweet, sweet surrender. losing air mortar well they've lost one and gained another and they just uh, it's just like having a new management sign uh, triple seven flex and it is quite significant isn't it look at that Josh Owen who owns Boab um, I believe it's still under the ownership of British Airways 
um, which is why they are only able to allot her a limited space on the airfield. Um, again, my my personal, um, you know, like I say, space is at a premium, and that's why, unfortunately, she's surrounded by uh, lots of, um, you know, ops vehicles and, uh, and stairways and all that kind of paraphernalia, which is a little bit of a shame, I have to say. Um, because the more that she gets sort of like pushed to the back of the room kind of thing, the more obscured she is uh, from the road. Oh, it's bad enough that she's got that big, that, that, that there's a brick building there, there's the fencing um, and all that stuff around her. And then on top of that, you've also got vehicles. The only time you get a really good look at her is if you're taxiing uh, out for departure on that taxiway and you turn right onto 27 left and you see her. Uh, that's about the only um, sort of like good shot you get of her. If you're looking at her from the road uh, side, you'll just see, you'll see her. But um, of course there is all that stuff in front of her, which is a shame, isn't it? Um, but you know, again, who's gonna take responsibility for it is the question, you know. Who has the responsibility for it? Obviously. British Airways Engineering, I would imagine, are, uh, are the team that deals with that, but they've got other stuff to do, you know? Uh, you've got to, you know, um, and it's time, it costs money, you know? So easy for us to show, I'll give her a clean, will you? You know, it's... Oh, is that more stuff? Is that stuff going on? Or is that stuff, I think there's stuff going on, isn't it? to gate. Miles high, yeah, indeed. Uh, Concord down there is just an empty shell. No engines, uh, no interior. They would have uh, stripped her of uh, almost everything. Um, I'd imagine probably even the flight deck, uh, which is a great shame. Of course, it is a great shame. Well, yeah, um, this is a 339, folks. The uh, Neo variant of the A330, Airbus, the airframer, redeveloping or modernising the A330 platform with a new wing and new engine. Well, I don't know about a new wing totally, but probably lots of modern components to sling those big engines underneath them. to her uh, predecessor, the Trent 700. That's the Trent 7000 engine. Oh, she's oh, nice. Here we go. will make a very shallow turn to the left, uh, to the right, sorry. Mark Swee has gifted a membership. Thank you, Mark Swee. Oh, big old heavy lump. Pneumatic power to get this undercarriage up.
They are massive wings. Get some free fish before she disappears. Might get some uh, breakthrough fluffage. Little bit, little bit. Shirley Burton is a brand spanking new member. Welcome, Shirley. Now, why are they holding this aircraft, you wonder? Um, mainly because of the wake. Uh, mind you, there's quite a short hold, I have to be honest. Deborah Speller, Liz Matthew, Josh Owen, Fly SSC. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of us that uh, would... Oh, it's another... Oh, it's a joke, uh, there's a lot of us who would obviously volunteer to clean Concord, but uh, wow, that's a steep climb. Daz Fitch, brand new member, welcome Daz. Someone's going flying. Brian Stewart, Bruce Motu. Yeah, like I say, the only uh, the the issue that British Airways or actually um, Heathrow Airport Limited uh, would have with um, a whole bunch of people being airside um, cleaning Concord would be uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, they need to be supervised. Um, that involves a team of people. Um, you know, you don't want people running around the airfield. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 a you know, just getting airside, one person getting myself airside is, uh, is a big enough task, folks, um, let alone um, a whole bunch of people. Uh, so they've obviously called in, I'd imagine. I did hear that apparently it was, um, it was uh, uh, cleaned by, um, uh, you know, um, uh, people who work for um, British Airways engineering but who've done it voluntarily um, without uh, without um, being paid for it if you see what I mean uh, alternatively it may just be that on a specific day um, the team the crews were given a task and one of those is to clean uh, that 777 over there that A320 over there and BOAB um, the Concorde oh really we're going to clean BOAB are we yeah 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 just give her a, give her a scrub and then uh, you know it may have been part of the day's um, work schedule, who knows? Not specifically, you know, um, blah, blah. Flight SSC British Airways Engineering Apprentices, apparently. There we go.
Still making a new, uh... Yeah, the paddock would be a great thing. Unfortunately, folks, the paddock, at some point, uh, the owners of the paddock are looking to redevelop it. Um, it will become an industrial estate of some description in the future. Uh, but obviously, the owners are waiting to um, get fat on the riches of retirement uh, from selling that land uh, to a developer. Um, and obviously, um, the, 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 it's the planning permission that's obviously the, uh, the stumbling block for them at this stage because uh, you're building it right next to, it's, it's, you're building it right next to a, um, a, a, a residential street, which isn't, you know, it's not rare for that to happen, you know, but these days uh, planning permission is a, uh, is a difficult thing to get, let's face it. Jumbo update. Is that going on? You see, that's going on, isn't it? I think. And by the way, uh, like I say, that's not going to be for some time um, because of obviously the local community will obviously um, uh, be against that redevelopment because we're not just talking about a paddock we're talking about land that reaches out uh, beyond the paddock over the other side of the road um, but at the same time would be just an extension of this industrial area here you can see all that land over there that all stretches out there I think it's owned by the same people there's the paddock down there there he is look the instigator look yeah 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 you just uh, yeah um, uh, so so you know it's it's just an extension of this of this land here and um, these guys understandably want to retire you know this fella he's uh, he, he wants to he wants to retire which is understandable he's got a big plot of land he wants to sell it and um, buy a boat and sail off into the sunset literally <laughs> which he's, he's perfectly entitled to do so he's worked all hard all his life and he's you know Uh, Matt Burgess factor in it's very close to the runway threshold uh, yeah 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 but you know there's other things that are close to the threshold like uh, <laughs> the BP station um, like the car rental garage like that hotel and also um, right over and underneath it is this uh, there's a I think that's a hotel there um, or some kind of um, no, I don't think it's a hotel I think it's a, you know something to do with the NTSB or something like that. NTSB what are we talking about the um one of the airport related um, governing body. Yeah, they can't change the ILS. They would obviously have to, um, you know, uh, build a, brick, a, a big brick wall or something there um, because they can't reach into that. They can't re reallocate it. And of course, um, I guess part of the uh, planning would involve disruption. And, um, you know, the locals don't want all of that because it would be, it would mean uh, quite a lot of disruption to the local area so I can't see it happening anytime soon put it that way I did suggest to the owner that you know you should build um, you should build a, a big set of bleachers in there you know and um, open it for uh, potentially open it for uh, plane spotters but that again would also require planning permission you can't just build something on your land without getting planning permission uh, so you know you can't be bothered with it really with the with the amount of investment um, in time and energy versus the return that they get on it again which is totally understandable you know like even if it's a thousand pound a week it wouldn't it just wouldn't make uh, any difference they're looking to sell the whole thing for millions and millions of pounds and then be on their way James McKelney yeah it may be I don't know as it's protected uh, in the green belt but there may be some restrictions on it I would imagine yeah he's right yeah the ILS that is the ILS the, these these are just the approach lights these ones here they stretch all the way out to here 
um, the approach lights. Um, this is the instrument landing system, the ILS, which uh, the aeroplane connects to, literally, it's like a... It's like as if you've gone out and left a, a, a string of string behind you. Uh, Avro Arrow has gifted a membership. Thanks, mate. Dean Williams is a brand new member. Yeah, it's like almost, um, you know, um, uh, a, 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 a beam of light, literally, if you imagine it, which the aircraft locks onto um, when it's on, when it's turned on to the final approach. Uh, locks onto the localizer, I think it is. Looks like Cafe Pacific A350. Wow, he's gone up early. The way that thing floats, literally. Thank you, Mark. It's gifted a membership. Very kind of you, mate. So, not long now before we've got our BA pilot. Yeah, roll that on the mains. Nice. Jules Harris, BA85, not yet on radar. What's that all about? What's that? <laughs> <sighs> Concord Trivia, due south. When in flight, you could place a book in the seam space between the galley and the passenger upon landing could not retrieve the book as it was securely stuck in place uh, yeah do south a little bit more info on that one because of the expansion and contraction of the aircraft during flight um, partly uh, with heat as well the um, uh, but anyway um, yes the uh, I think um, one of the pilots actually um, stuffed his flying hat in between uh, one of the panels and the and the bulkhead on the flight deck um, whilst it was in flight and then obviously when it landed and the aircraft shrunk literally um, it locked that hat in place and you could not retrieve it and I think it's still on one of the, the aircraft um, right now but that's true true thank you do south uh, Bruce Motu, I once worked down that way years ago. Great Southwest Road, and it would have been nice to have something other than a Sandwich van. Kelvin Grant. The field being sold to the Friends of the Earth, and they've sold it off in one metre square plots. I was talking to them, they told me to try and stop the third runway from happening. Oh, okay, that's a. I 
mean, I, I, I personally, I think it's progress, isn't it? You know, the, th the whole third runway thing. I think, I think it, it's just been addressed and approached in the wrong way by the people who are uh, um, proposing it. Um, first of all, oh, I've just run out of explaining this so many times. I'm so bored of it. By stopping the third runway, it's not actually going to improve things, is it? Because it, it, it's not going to—it's not going to all of a sudden make the Earth a better place by not having a third runway at Heathrow. Um, you've got—you've got to embrace it in terms of um, the fact that you can uh, have less disruption from uh, from certain uh, certain times of the day and and things like that. A bit like what they did. At, um, at, at Frankfurt, for example, with their third runway or with their additional runway, the one that's right out the other side. Schiphol with the Polderbahn. Uh, the locals get on with it well. Uh, the, 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 the locals have embraced it. It hasn't, it didn't impact. Obviously, it did impact in some way, but you know, it's since been embraced. Um, the developers planted thousands of trees around the area uh, to counteract, you know, um, the. Um, you know, because the trees are obviously good for the environment in terms of soaking up. Um, is it CO2? I think. Um, but, um, but you know, uh, if, if they were to develop a third runway here, it would be something that would be used for um, small aircraft and not big aircraft. So a bit like the one at Frankfurt that has a maximum uh, sized aircraft um, operation on it. You know, um, with all these new aircraft that are coming on stream now, with the new quiet engines, you could quite easily have a third runway um, all the way out there, which would be connected, obviously, with a taxiway, but you only use it for small, regional and uh, domestic um, operations, and not big aircraft, obviously. Um, well, that's one thing that the local community would have to um, understand, uh, that you know a developer would be uh, trying to meet in the middle with with local communities and so on and so forth um you just it, they just need to listen really is what it is you know uh, we're not looking at you know building a big smelly airport with lots of you know um emissions and all that kind of thing it was ob ob obviously be governed and overseen by uh, by by the government and um and local communities and stuff like that in terms of potential emissions. Uh, but anyway, you know, you're still going to get your couch um, professionals, aren't you? No, you know, it's not going to work. Uh, anyway. Whisper Jets, Nick Bray, yes. 777 Lenin, 350, 1000 bath. Oh, hello. Now that's interesting. You don't often see that, do you? It's a brake malfunction of some sort. Looks like a flight test, doesn't it? It's very rare to see that. Well, on the 320 anyway. It's one of those wheels is still spinning because the brake system has failed. And, um, and one of the wheels is still spinning on the main undercarriage, that is. Um, obviously it's a dirty configuration as they call it um, this is the free fiddy 1000 zip zap Zipzap, who's gifted five memberships. Thanks, Zipzap. You there, GP? Okay. Nigel Gale. Um, 
new Heathrow CEO has said no third runway, but can't remember exact words, but something like using existing space smarter. Okay. Well, there we go then. That's the end of that then. That's the end of that discussion. Suffer 6-3, you could actually think about moving the cargo operations to the third run. Well, no, because the cargo operations involve big, smelly aeroplanes, didn't they? You know, until the 350 freighter is operational and so on and so forth, you don't want a third runway operating um, a, a cargo hub with big, smelly aeroplanes. I mean, I, I, just, don't get me wrong, I'd, I'd love it, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, making, in, in, improve, increasing the, 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 the number of uh, cargo jets uh, coming into Heathrow. But, you know, the numbers that Heathrow put across in terms of their uh, cargo... Um, numbers per year uh, unlike places like you know Schiphol's got a massive cargo you know you, you often see more than three or four or even five 747s sitting along the gates there on a daily basis um, quite a rare thing to see here most of the freight numbers that Heathrow pump out to their to, to their to their bottom line statistics is belly freight from from uh, uh, operators That's a whole new. That's a whole nother story. Screaming Emi about it, it, it expanding. That that those 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 options have been looked at by uh, by the government. You know, um, in terms of you know expanding uh, Stansted. I believe that Gatwick is going ahead with its. Uh, when I say second runway, it's already actually got a second runway, but it's used as a taxiway, um, and it would be something that will be operational at certain times of the day. I think uh, you know. Um, time specific uh, Brian Stewart a couple of royal planes uh, preparing to depart Royal Jordanian Royal Brunei ok well both of them come in fair play there's the Royal Brunei jet just coming into picture there Why that Montana girl Glad to be first class member now, uh, Jerry and Jilly. Looking forward to many years of my husband thinking I'm a nut for watching big jets. Headed to Helena, sadly by truck, to Easter dinner with Grandma. Is it Helena or Helena? I don't know, but welcome Montana girl. From the Montana Hills. Just waiting for that door to close. Uh, this is your Royal Brunei jet, which we don't often see. But it is around about this time of the day, the departure normally, isn't it, for Royal Brunei, I think? Around about five o'clock. Where's our BA85 GP? Is she on radar yet? John Paul Russell. Welcome, John Paul. Le Ballet Rouge. Ouvre le poche. Dans la voiture. Look at that, right in your screen, folks. The most amazing wing profile in the world. Well, some people might argue it, but uh, in terms of technology and um, um, uh, uh, advancements in materials, you know, that dreamliner wing is a thing of beauty 
doesn't look like the 350 wing flexes up much, but trust me, it does. Two KLM jets. Look at that. Skip old all of a sudden. Yeah, this is really a GT Union. Yeah, Painfield, yeah. The test rig at Painfield. Apparently they leave the aircraft in the rig for years and years and years um, to test it over time, which is quite important, which is, makes perfect sense. Um, so they flex it and deflex it and flex it and deflex it, like, I think, over time. Um, apparently the airframe that's in the rig will be the oldest um, airframe of, uh, of Boeing's, I believe. Mr. Rigsby, why don't planes use the full length of the runway for derated departures? Well, kind of a good point because obviously you know um i mean the dreamliner has a tendency to use a lot of runway um, and that is not down really to the pilots it's down to the aircraft uh, systems themselves um, because um, they like to preserve the life of the engine in terms of its 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 um cycle of um life let's say uh between um, servicing intervals and so on and so forth. Uh, the less um, pressure you put on the engine, the less, um, uh, the, the, the longer between service intervals you're looking at. So um, that is kind of the reason why they use so much uh, runway, the Dreamliners anyway. Uh, not all the time. If they're very, very light, um, again, it's all down to the flight computers uh, based on the weight of the aircraft how much runway it's going to need and that will uh, I think you know our pilots will confirm that that is a that is basically the the v1 number the rotate number the rotate speed um, and again that will be um, something that will be calculated based on the weight of the aircraft 
the length of the runway, the weather conditions, etc, etc. see whether I reckon we're gonna get that jumbo out before we uh, before we leave that's for sure the long way. Oh, okay, okay, I see what you mean, yeah. That's highly unlikely, I would have thought. She's not going to come all the way up here and then all the way back down there again. Never, not in a million years. Jeff Langston. And you're a good bloke called Grant Langston back in the day. South African. Good old guy. 125 Super Christ champion. Anyway, Grant, uh, sorry, Jeff is saying, I was living in Hull, not near Rolls-Royce test bed many of the Trent engines were tested to what sounded like well over a hundred percent wow blade offs and ice ingestion the sounds we heard were amazing wow that must have been fantastic what a thing to experience yeah testing to destruction literally that's what they do destroy the engine by whatever means Silence for the A220. See, this is the kind of jet that you put out on the third runway. Oh, why did I bring that up again? Remember, take yourself back to the old days, folks, with the 707s, the 727s, before hush kits even came along. We'd still hear the bleeding thing like 20 minutes as it literally crosses the channel. I'm only joking, of course, you know, but uh, it's just insane um, how far we've come in terms of engine technology um, and, um, and quietness and um, efficiency of engines should embrace that rather than keep slagging off the industry. What they need is, uh, is, 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 you know, Minister of Aviation who knows what they're talking about and embraces what's being done by the aviation industry. Has his or her head, ear to the, to the, to the ground rather than one week being the Minister of of agriculture and then the next week becoming the Minister of Aviation. Got no relationship whatsoever, they just move them from post to post, didn't they? Um, that's one thing that does um, really sort of like wind me up about um, about the way that, uh, you know, uh, 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 political parties work. But anyway, I'm not, I don't want to go into that. All I'm saying is that the people who are responsible for a specific um, a, a, a part of the industry and industry should be knowledgeable not literally going from Minister of Dustbin Lids one week to you know, running people's lives the next. Go on! Yeah! You know, I have to say that's why Boeing at the moment, uh, even though they've, even though Calhoun said he's going to step down, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 this woman that's coming, who's just sort of like a stand-in, um, she doesn't have any engineering background. You know, people need, uh, in specific positions, she's put a memorandum out to her workforce via email. 
You should be going out onto the floor and speaking to these people, witnessing it, seeing it firsthand. What's going on? Where are, where are these problems uh, happening? And uh, what department's responsible for it and all that? Let's look at the aircraft in terms of its manufacture and more so, uh, not just manufacture, but assembly as well. It's not just at the Boeing plant. This is Spirit Aero Systems as well. You know, there's a lot of things that need to be addressed. And, um, you know, until you sort of like bring someone in um, who's really clued up, passionate about getting things right, listens to the workers, listens to the people, listens to the, the public, rather than listening to the bloody, you know, the, the executives up there, uh, all, the, all the fat cats. We want money. We want money. Faster, faster. Quickly, hurry up. Build them, build them. You know, you don't want that. You want people to trust your product and your brand. If you don't do that, you're in trouble, son. You're in trouble. BA85, uh, where's BA85 GP? Is that her there? No, that's a triple. Uh, that's a triple. She's still on the other side, is she? Okay. Replacing people doesn't really, yeah, I mean, obviously it makes a difference, doesn't it, in terms of like, you know, uh, uh, shareholders or whatever, you know, uh, people going, well, it's about time we had a, 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 a shake up. But don't just replace one person with another person who's got no clue about how an aeroplane works or, you know, the engineering um, uh, uh, and everything about it, you know, the engines, the, the you know, the, the structure of the aircraft, the, the reasons why these things are happening, you know, uh, that needs to be addressed, man. Um, yes. And there are lot, probably quite a few people out there. Don't get people who, who, who ran ICI or, or, you know, they were big, big directors of this, that and the other. Get people who know about aeroplanes and engineering. Then you'll get people to back you. Don't care how many flipping varsity degrees and doctorates in this and that they've got. They need to know how an aeroplane works and why potentially things are happening. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's disgruntled workforce, then sit down with them, talk to them you know engage with them and understand them they're the people at the front line at the end of the day whatever plaster's got a plaster on it just those big leading engine nacelles on the trend 1000 and the gen x heater element in there as well I'll, I'll say the biggest problem that Boeing have had all the over all these years is is this whole thing of self-certification and that's something that I've only literally learned in the in the last year or however long less than a year uh, that, um, that, that that Boeing apparently self-certify well that basically means that um, you know, uh, it's their own teams that say, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we'll pass that. It's like, no, mate, no. You know, when you when you um, when you build a house and you have the building instructors come around, you don't go, oh, yeah, don't need you here, mate. We've already certified this. This is fine. You know, we've given permission. It's like, no, mate, it doesn't go like that. Is this her coming? No. Um, you have to wait for uh, for all the regulations to be um, signed off and all that sort of stuff building permission planning permission uh, you know all different things need to be okay to to to, to pass scrutinize and all that kind of stuff in production um uh, with with boeing is 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 is, is obviously that you know you have people specifically employed for that purpose don't we okay here she comes That's right there. Is that BA85, folks? Jeez. 
I thought I could hear something starting up. It's that Air Canada triple seven in there. BA85, isn't it, GP? Yes, indeed, Paul Skilling confirming. Thank you. Zaris BA85 number 10 let's get her to number one shall we so this is um this is one of our regular pilots isn't it vanilla pilot is on uh, is as she's known on twitter is it Jilly? vanilla pilot yeah her twitter tag is vanilla pilot hell's bells um helen obviously i'd imagine um Robert, Robert Dean multitasking, <laughs> rants and planes. So we've got uh, Helen, obviously, um, vanilla pilot, uh, operating. No, all right, all right. What have I done now? Hell's Bells is obviously Helen, isn't it? Well... Why would she call herself Hell's Bell? Okay, all right. Her name maybe not but Helen. I don't know. But anyway, Vanilla Pilot on Twitter, folks. Um, and we have a member's dad on board, apparently. Why would anyone call himself Hell's Bells? If Cheryl's husband. There we go. Cheryl's husband is uh, in business in row four, apparently. <laughs> oh, it's Lindsay, is it? Okay, sorry, my apologies, Hel uh, Lindsay. It's not Helen at all. Hell's bells, I just, I, I don't know, no idea. But anyway, if, if I could rewind, I would rewind, but um, Lindsay, it's not Helen, it's Lindsay, and she is, uh, I've, it's just that I've known people who've been before. Okay. Cathay Pacific Freighter. Um, the main deck cargo door is now closed, and we're just waiting for L1 to close. James McKelney. No, never assume. Yeah, yeah, my apologies, uh, Lindsay. Yeah, yeah, vanilla pilot. Let's just leave it at that, shall we? David E, you are right. She's number five, HGC. Come on, let's at least get her to number one, f f you know, out of me getting it all wrong. Claire Bear, yes indeed, an A350. She's operating today. 
Number five, 524 following us, CPR, thank you. Straight forward. Lady Monty is Hell's Bells, Monty, because that's her dog's name. Now I'm even more confused. Okay, flipping it. because there's another 350 coming out <laughs> well I can't see okay so it's Bravo Lima fair enough okay yes both are yeah has she just has she is she right down at the other end okay it is the one up front. Uh, Sarah Louise, yes we do. We have the Vanilla Pilot, uh, as she is known on Twitter. And Cheryl's husband is also on board BA85, flying in business. Uh, Cleb Air, Iran Air departing. Indeed it is. Oh, little Serbian coming out here. <laughs> Brian Stewart, very funny. The other 350s, chocolate pilot. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, we have a pilot at the door. Do 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 do. Leave it on the doorstep, son. Big Mac. Cheryl Howard, this is so exciting. Daughter is here too and talking to Paul on the plane. Wow. Which side's he on? Is he on the left side? Because if he's on the left side, we could get a... He's on the right, is he? Oh, okay. She's number four. 776 people tracking her right now. Iran air there and she's turning on now so it looks like she's going to be she's either going to go out in front of that triple seven which I think she is yes she is in the meantime Delta 330 so it's Vancouver bound is it Chile bit of fogging in that engine intake look. Folks, if you're on flight radar 24, jump on it and let's get uh, let's get this BA flight BA85 to number one. All you've got to do is mind that, click on it, and then it'll show you as tracking it. Oh my God, what was that? Was that a, 
Was that a crow? Oh God! <laughs> there she goes. Okay. Yeah! Happy travels! So that's a, a nice day off in Vancouver for um, Vanilla Pilot and all her crew. That last flight I had with BA, by the way, it's sort of like, you know, re-established how uh, how cool for me the BA flight crews are um, because obviously sometimes people think that a flag carrier should be very stiff upper lip and like you know we don't have fun at all uh, whereas it's just not the case um, really great to uh, to meet up with the uh, the BA crew um, on that short flight that I had uh, out to Schiphol on um, Wednesday very friendly and very um, professional and friendly, you know. Um, due out 6.50, I believe. That's 40 minutes from now. Dave Vickers liking the new flight radar 24. What's that all about? Oh, desktop version. Daniel Hill, Vancouver, would be an awesome location for the next US shows, even though it's Canada. Great location and would annoy and would annoy some people, Daniel Hill saying. Don't know about that. Uh, we've done Toronto. And the local. What's that, GP? They did, or. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, which is, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Air Canada jet with the Bandit livery. Trash Panda, as some call them. We'll look for a little bit of fogging in the intakes here. Hold on. Yeah, great looking jet like this, man. There it is, bit of fogging, just a little bit of fogging. Oh my god, was that a seagull? Nearly flew into its wing. It was a giant seagull. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. So that's another thing that I've learned today from Screaming Amy. Spoiler eyes. Which basically means that they're sort of like used alongside the ailerons. 
um, to, uh, to aid in the turning of the aircraft, um, sort of like bank left, bank right sort of turn. Um, and, um, but at the same time, also used as uh, on the descent sometimes you'll see them extended quite a lot you know not fully as they are when they're used as speed brakes or ground spoilers should i say on the on the ground um which help in uh, uh, uh pushing the aircraft down onto the ground to maximize the brake power but spoiler ons whether you see them ever so slightly being maneuvered Gonna get that jumbo going out, folk. Yeah, no, I'm aware of that, screaming at me. The spoiler on is the same board as the spoilers and the speed brakes. All of them are the same, but they just carry out a different, um, a different purpose. Uh, speed brakes, um, I've seen them deployed quite heavily uh, on the descent. Uh, when you're sort of like coming at the top of descent to s slow the aircraft down. Um, sometimes they're deployed for quite some time. Obviously nothing near in terms of the, uh, the angle that you'd get when they're on the ground as uh, ground spoilers. But spoilerons are used also, uh, well, they, they, the whole, the, the, the flight surface itself, when they're utilised as spoilerons, they also aid in the, uh, the manoeuvring of the aircraft. look out of it if you're lucky enough to sit over the wing and you see the aircraft during your uh, descent if you're in a uh, particularly windy conditions you might see the uh, the spoiler ons being used um, but also uh, well mainly that is the case I've, I've noticed anyway nice 767 here we go We've seen it also, we've seen it. If you look at some of the uh, approach, oh, he's gone up steep, isn't he? Flipping heck. Oh, my son, his number one's a bit smoky, isn't it? Look, look at that. Old school. Old school. Oh. Oh. L1's closed. That jet may be going out earlier. <laughs> Very funny, Avro. Spoiler runs are people who give game results when they're not meant to. Or any other result. Not just games races etc k-pop lover getting ready for the eclipse yet yeah, united states isn't it uh, the whole of or big parts of the united states are going to be subject to a total eclipse of the sun captain jerry donnelly wristwatch revival is here in seattle somewhere where we're probably going to be flying through on our way to anchorage later on in April.
interesting uh, quiz question that, isn't it? Claire Bear, EGPX, straight forward, Nick Gray. Does a watch on the wrist interfere with side stick operation? Highly unlikely, Nick. Unless you wear your wrist and in your hand. Uh, screaming emu. Uh, you should have done it today, mate. Um, clocks went forward last night. Or is he talking about the US? Is it a couple of days later or something? Um, the US. Oh, they were beginning to come from. Okay. Uh, Lou Landings. Great question, Lou. What is the difference between winglets and sharklets? Well, a winglet is a general terminology for a, for a, um, a, a, a wing end plate, whether it's a blended wing tip. Um, if you look at uh, that Dreamliner there, for example, that's a blended wing tip or a raked wing tip, as Boeing call it. Um, there are different types, of course, the fence style winglet, which is the old Airbus style, as well as the 747-400. Um, you have the Sharklet, which is this thing here, um, which is on the Neo, as well as some hybrid, um, um, sort of like in-between A320 Neos uh, and A321 Neos as well. Uh, you have, of course, the, um, um, uh, th th that's why some people uh, a, a little bit confused and think that the 777 doesn't have a winglet on it um, because it does not all of them uh, some of the older 7 777 200s don't have any winglets on them at all they are just uh, they're, 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 they're chop wings as I call them uh, that's a blended wing tip right there on the A350 that curved winglet there um, they're all winglets basically but it's a different uh, style and different design which is unique to the particular type of aircraft although um, and, and again like I say um, you know the uh, the 777 um, has a has a, uh, a, um, a raked wingtip much like the Dreamliner but the Dreamliner's wingtip has a slight curve in it as well um, but they are blended wingtips as they're known which doesn't mean that it's all one piece because the wingtip is actually a bolt-on assembly this is a fence style winglet which is on the, um, the A220 which you can see is squared off much like the uh, 747 old Scott style winglet look at the Embraer the E2 wing uh, and you'll see what a beautiful in, uh, uh, piece of design work that is with a sort of like a raked wing tip listen how quiet that is though Uh, Hamad Khan, no dates yet on Anchorage. No dates yet, folks. Really enjoying the first evening shows. It's still daylight at this time. Clive Clark saying down in South Africa. Deborah Gunter. It's a brand new member. Deborah's uh, a first class member. Very warm welcome to you, Deborah. Um, hope you're well and get involved in the chat. If you want to get involved, you don't have to get involved. Just please understand that there's an open field here for anybody to come in and talk aviation um, and ask any question or answer any uh, questions that may be coming about. Scroopy, HGC. Uh, Martin Mayer, when are you coming to Dublin? on the books just yet uh, this is the split scimitar winglet if you're talking about winglets on the 737 max um, also on the 87 and 800s um, the NGs the non max variants um, which uh, sport a different very similar looking uh, split scimitar winglet of course the first um, operator well uh, um, uh, air framer to delve into the uh, market of um, split scimitar winglet was the um, McDonnell Douglas MD-11, well the Boeing MD-11 uh, 
uh, as it was then. But I think it was actually the, the, the uh, originally a McDonald Douglas design, um, which Boeing um, bought into. Screaming Emu, I think the 777-200 is the only airplane out there right now that can't benefit from a winglet. Something about the wing design makes it optimal already. Interesting. Well, of course, uh, the 777-200 freighters, all the freighters have a have a, 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 um, a, a raked wing tip, much the same as the 777-300. Um, um, but, uh, but yeah, and not any of... Well, I, I mean, there are passenger some of the passenger variants is it the ERs that have a winglet on them um, a raked wing tip should I say uh, but yeah he's right some of the um, some of these old 777 200s do not have a winglet as you can see there on this old girl here who's just had a wash uh, looking very happy indeed look at this look at the difference in the the, the um, slight tooth whitening literally in it look I mean, that is a Neo there. It's a relatively new aircraft, but look how grubby they get. So now you can understand why, you know, you can't really have a go at British Airways when it comes to the Concorde in terms of, you know, her keeping her clean, because you would literally need to clean her every single week um, to keep her uh, pristine and white. Does anyone on here work for Donata or Grand ha Ground Handling Company? I don't think we've got anyone from Donata. Um, my uh, my niece is actually very high up in Donata at um, at uh, Dubai. Who does? Oh, Gaz. Okay, interesting. Was it Gaz Grill? Is it? its way on its way as in on its way out uh, that would probably be that one there wouldn't it oh, might be it no, no that doesn't look like that looks like a dreamliner and it looks like um, uh, Kenya Airways I think is she pushing Deborah Gunter loving this channel first time viewer and I'm hooked Deborah that is brilliant thank you a very warm welcome to you keep the chat going if you want to sit back watch whatever you want to do um, but uh, of course if you're new to Big Jet TV we're live twice a week um, that's the general sort of like uh, turnover of Big Jet TV um, Wednesdays and Sundays um, however from time to time we may break into a a, a, a prompt a, an unprompted show like we probably will impromptu sorry uh an unprompted did i say to you? it's the same sort of thing isn't it yeah. <laughs> an unprompted show uh yeah anyway um probably going to be doing something tomorrow don't know what it is or what time it's going to be but um obviously there's a lot of people here in the uk um, are going to be sitting around twiddling their thumbs for uh, Bank Holiday Monday. Who wants to sit out there in, the, in all the traffic and crazy, crazy amount of, um, of... It's just the Max coming out now. Look how bright those, uh, those lights are on the Max. High intensity. It's very interesting that I noticed about the Max when we were at Schiphol. Um, something that has a big difference between this 
and the a and the ne and the neo and that is that this aircraft cannot take containers as far as i'm aware uh, inside the, the the hold of the aircraft uh, for baggage it has to be loaded independently suitcase by suitcase um and cargo etc et unlike the neo which or should i say the um the airbus which has the capability of con containers doesn't it like you know cans as they call them marianne has gifted five memberships thanks marianne you know i, I just it's just interesting isn't it because from the point of view of you know when you when you buy a, a, a new vehicle you know a new car if you've got if you've got kids and luggage regularly you want you you're going to want something that's got easy access into the into the boot area or the trunk as some people call it you know uh, if it's a, if it's you know like a, a large vehicle um, you want uh, uh, you, you're going to choose your car based on the ergonomics of that uh, vehicle aren't you um, I would anyway um, in terms of access into the back of the uh, vehicle um, you know the fold down and all that kind of thing I mean I've recent um, recent um, rentals in um, that's your Star Alliance jet Air China um, recent uh, uh, rentals in America um, if I get a large um, utility vehicle I will um, I will obviously get one that has that sort of like you know uh, easy access into the back because I've got lots of I've got a big bag that I need to put in there so it's nice when it has that folding tailgate on it uh, as a support platform um, and uh, you kind of choose your if you're going to buy a vehicle you choose it based on that didn't you I just it just surprises me as an operator if I was offered a, tr a seventh a, a, and, and trust me folks I don't have any preference between Airbus and Boeing at all don't think that I do all I'm saying is from a practical standpoint it just makes sense to have an aircraft that has the capability of being able to load all of the baggage into a container on its own get that um, uh, uh, out onto the um, onto the apron load it into the the cargo hold the the the, the, the hold of the aircraft um, and then um, uh, rather than individually having the the baggage coming up the, the conveyor you know um, and and doing it that way uh, it just uh, for me it makes to, to, to me it sort of like seems that turnaround time could be quicker uh, utilizing containers um, unless somebody's going to say no 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 you can get containers on a 737 this is the uh, Kenya Airways 787 off to Nairobi Dean is a brand new member welcome Dean right on the uh, wheels off ground moment for this Dreamliner Quite funny actually you know um, you know when you uh, drive into a town sometimes in the UK and it says twinned with you know Osterbrook or something like that in Germany or whatever it might be I don't know um, oh uh, he's great old RL at this, at this hotel downstairs in the lead in, in, in the gentlemen's toilets um, they've got um, uh, they've twinned with certain latrines around the globe uh, like a little grass hut in the middle of Zambia or something like that. Um, yeah, you've got to be there to see it. I understand. What's Rohit done? Uh, Darn! Is that Darn? Is a brand new member. Welcome, Darn. Uh, Annie, Annie O. MCR is a new member as well. And Marianne Garacci has gifted five memberships. Thank you, Marianne. Oh, is that Rohit? Oh, Rohit, you're a you're a you're you're a man after my own heart. Good for you, mate. Anyone who uh, um, 
my cat is a uh, is a rescue cat, Charchi, uh, from Battersea Cats and Dogs Home. Uh, anything you can do to uh, make an animal's life better, anything, anything, even rescuing a bumblebee from the water or um, anything, just anything that's living, if you can rescue it and give it a better life, then so be it. I mean, it may be that a bumblebee's like, oh, I was having a swim there. <laughs> Bill Black wouldn't want to twit with my toilet. And that's quite interesting, it's just the pictures above each routine. So I'm twinned with this and twinned with that. <laughs> like caterpillars. I think I probably uh, dis dis disrupted the uh, mating season of caterpillars in Miami, haven't I? <laughs> Don't rescue hornets. Boom, lad, I've got rescue fish. Big old flaps being extended on the 747. Nowhere near, of course, the flap extension uh, on arrivals, of course, uh, when it's coming in. Different um, angle of flap, much less it's more extension getting that wing longer um, or wider whichever way you want to look at it um, uh, the, the, the the flight surface itself is it expanded by some somewhere in a region of um, uh, uh, only 20 percent and yet has an effectiveness of around about 70 percent in terms of the surface area of the wing uh, and of course when she's um, when she's uh, coming into land, those flaps will be extended right the way down. You see the big slotted flaps on the um, on the 747 and the 777. Very easy to spot that. Oh, see it again. Nice, 339. Virgin Atlantic. Maybe one we've flown on. She's going up steep. surprised to see um, uh, Branson's new uh, the, the, the new A339 with Virgin Atlantic um, spotted at Toulouse uh, the other day um, interesting to see that uh, oh mate come on oh, you miss a great flipping shot there son camera let me down there um, yeah really interested to see that um, uh, Virgin Atlantic you know, it's, I, d I d don't understand the thinking behind it, but you know, um, the, um, the the new uh, nose art that they have with their with their new jets, um, you know, uh, they, they don't relate relate in any way to the name of the aircraft. What's the one? Ziggy Stardust? Is it Jilly? Is it, which one is it? Oh, let's get this right. You know. Yeah, yeah, Zig, Ziggy Stardust. What was it? The, 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 no, Spaceman. 
Major Tom, that was it, yeah. Um, uh, it, it was, uh, it's, just, it's just interesting that, you know, with a little bit of imagination, um, and they can still obviously use the sort of like, um, same sort of, you know, politically correct thing that they want to do with it. But, you know, if, you, if you're naming an aircraft after a spaceman, then why don't you put the nose art person, man or girl, or, or, or maybe not, or whatever it or they or he or she might be, put them in a space outfit. Wouldn't that be just worth, you know, and other, um, you know, the purple rain, um, maybe have a sort of like, have it in a, in a purple um, suit like Prince was in his velvet suit, you know, that, that, that kind of thing. I don't know whether, I don't know why they don't do that. Um, I'd love to get the official word from somebody at Virgin Atlantic's marketing or department that says, no, the reason why we do that is because of this. Because I can't think of any valid reason why they couldn't uh, be a little bit more imaginative, if you know what I mean. Graham Mead is a brand new member. Welcome, Graham. GV Tom, Carol Smith saying, there we go. CX8 is number four. We'll easily get her to number one, won't we? Matthews loving the wing flaps. There is nothing like it, is there? On the, the, the you know, I mean, obviously when you when you study the uh, the dynamics of a wing um, and see it in in um, in all its glory uh, on the Dreamliner, there is nothing like it. Uh, in, in ways of explaining it to somebody, look how um, relatively flat that wing is um, when it's when it's on the ground versus how flexed up it is during um, during flight. Which again, like I say, and I continue to, uh, and will continue to say, is that the wing is happiest when it is in flight because it's it flexes. That's the way the, the, the wing is developed. Uh, they want these things in the air um, and not on the ground. She's number three. Boeing should buy Embraer. Well, they were actually looking at that at one stage, weren't they? When the whole um, um, A220 program came along with... Um, There was a plan for Boeing to buy um, part of Embraer, possibly the E2 program at some stage, but uh, I think uh, talks fell apart on that one. Bombardier, of course, uh, the A220 pro program, uh, that just that part of um, Bombardier's uh, business model was purchased by, um, by Airbus. And uh, what a great job they did with that. Of course, that was originally the CS100 programme, which was uh, renamed the Airbus A220. But I think, uh, I think Boeing either 
ran out of money or um, just uh, it was wasn't so much a, of a priority because they were putting all their money on the uh, putting all their money on the oh, I'm leaving out son. Indeed, um, fly SSC. Um, it is Brazilian owned, isn't it, uh, Embraer? So. Or about CS100 and 300, yes, indeed. Originally. Oh, uh, screaming, it was rejected on antitrust grounds. Okay, well, there we go. Okay, folks, we're going to get it to number one. Uh, Deb B, no rain, just um, not limited visibility. She just, it's just a bit hazy. Anyway, here we go. Jumbo Jet 747-8 freighter. Wow, look at that. He's only used about 100 yards of runway. That's insane, man. Flipping it. It's going to go up like Branson Skyrocket. Look at that, man. She's going to be in the clouds by the time she gets here. Wow, that's a light. She kind of parry shouts to get it. Really? There's your raked wingtip, folks. Look at the wingtip on it. GENX engines. The power of two Dreamliners. By the power of Dreamliner! Look at her, look at the, look at the axe, look at that, she's cut through the cloud there, man. How cool is that? You see that? Big old slice in the cloud. She's gonna come out the other end of this, I think, you know. She's gonna, wow, look at that. She's gonna come out the other end of this, unless, yeah, she's too high now, I think. Just double check. Yeah, she's gone, man. She's gone. Wow. Jumbo jet. Paul Skilling. We got her to number one, apparently. There we go. Look at the big old bottom end on that 380, man. Look at the size of it. Screaming emu. Kind of understand what you're saying it is a more natural design but i've got to be honest with you the 350 what a beautiful piece of artwork that is engineering at uh, at its at its most beautiful of course every wingtip design is relevant to the specific aircraft um, you won't for example get a retrofit a350 winglet bolted onto a triple seven if you see what i mean um, although i remember reading recently that apparently at one point they did experiment with um, uh, 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 big shark giant sharklets on the 747 way back in the day um, I think that might have been well as on the freighters anyway I think Peter Muller 339 kilometers flight to Paris that explains it yeah low fuel load um, and uh, probably a very low um, cargo load as well. Flight SSC, wind cheap line on the 380 is beautiful. Andy Fishlock, thanks for the signed photos we've received. They are both sitting proudly on our mantelpiece with a B-17 flying fortress. Awesome! 
Oh, that's great. I'm honoured, I have to say. I'm honoured to be on your um, mantelpiece with a B-17 Flying Fortress. Wow. Any specific one? Sally B or uh, perhaps um, uh, a famous one from uh, the Second World War? Literally, that's why it was called the Flying Fortress, because it was like a bleeding castle in the sky, wasn't it? Blood flame rapture. Daniel Burns just been joined by Gizmo, my little dog. Ah, Gizmo! What's that? Who's that? Dig a hole. Bite! See him off! Let's come off that exit. Barry Quinlan's uh, getting to try the Lufthansa 380 next week. How cool is that? It's another Max going up. This one's the uh, Royal Air Maroc, the Ram. There's a wing, look at that. Massive fuel saving um, on the um, Max, the, 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 um, the scimitar winglet compared to the, the old Sharklet stuff. Uh, around about 2% more, I'm led to believe. Just killing Pokemon due out 723. I'm at 6.53 already. Where did that time go, mate? <whistles> Bailey. <whistles> Ernie. <laughs> Get all the dogs. <laughs> What's that? What's this? Seamoth! on the coat. Who's that? Cafe specific. Dog is tilting its head. What's that? Spooky Cindy favourites is uh, Vicky Chichua Chichu Chihuahua. <laughs> oh no 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 no! That's nice, isn't it? Look, ch -ch 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 the, yeah. Look at that! Wow! Look at that, folks.
pushing in. Let's claim Raptor. Gorgeous Emirates. Yeah. So another uh, another write up uh, this morning about uh, Emirates uh, premium economy class. Uh, it is as good as it gets, really. I have to say, um, they've spent a lot of money on their on their uh, refurbing their 380 fleet, continuing to do so. Um, some aircraft being um, um, unfortunately broken apart for spares, though. Um, so they are donor aircraft. These are the, this is the kind of aircraft that we were talking about earlier, folks, which is the future of uh, potential um, or the beginning, should I say, of um, hydrogen powered, um, electrically powered hydrogen slash air um, aircraft. I don't want to go into the whole debate like we did. If you want any questions answered, I refer to the earlier part of the show, if you please. Um, but that is the aircraft that I'm talking about, which will um, start the whole um, run of uh, hydrogen powered aircraft in the future. KM Malta Airlines on final JF840. Well, this is a first, isn't it, Jilly? That KM jet, saw a picture of it this morning. The new Malta Airlines, it's on finals. Oh, is it still in the Malta livery? Oh, okay. Sausages. ATR 42 Some fuller like in the Oman air is a nice one of my favorite sellers I do love that livery Jules Harris. The ATR was my favourite on landing during the windy show on Thursday. The pilot had skin. It was it was pretty uh, pretty gnarly, wasn't it? Charlie Farm Fox. Good afternoon, Charlie. Hope we're all doing well, folks. I'm going to keep an eye out for that motor jet. But um, is this is this perhaps the first operation? under the new Malta um, call sign, possibly, I don't know. KM Malta Airlines, yes. Look at that for a shot. Do dash eights have red or white beacons? I thought they have a they have a, a beacon on the a back, isn't it? Right on the back. The ATR certainly does. Has a white, a big white light on the back of it. Um, not sure if the dash eight does, to be honest with you. But he's talking about the beacons there. I thought all beacons had to be red, didn't don't they? Don't all beacons have to be red? I don't know. So this is the uh, CEO of Virgin Atlantic, not the chief, um, Josh Belly girl. Uh, Paul saying the ANA Pokemon jet, Pokemon jet, Pokemon. It's, oh, we got ribbons, folks. Look at that ribbon coming off that winglet. Didn't get much of it, but... Uh, it's the kind of thing we like to see. And there she is now. Probably get a hair up, start up, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. 
Fact tuning in from Anaheim, California. Good day to you, Kathy. Hamad Khan, Emirates 380, back in the queue again. And the Emirates uh, triple seven also going out. Jeremy Stokes. Jonathan Porterfield. It's a long way to go, mate, and I wouldn't be able to do it live, so I generally tend to do everything I can live. It's a long old way to go, isn't it? Little plane up behind a 3A unit. I want to be like him! No, you can't! Yahushua's disciple tuning in from Oregon. Beautiful part of the world. Up there in northern is 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 the um it's the, the Washington State in it, Oregon. I see the moment, I think. I hope I got that right. KLM E190 E2. Look at that. There's a wing for you, folks. There's a raked wing tip. Embraer have developed a completely new composite wing for the E2 jet, which basically means it's a full redesign, really, in terms of the wing route and the. Um, quiet, that is. And I think, in terms of the, um, I think if in terms of the uh, engine note, that is the quietest uh, aircraft in the world, uh, medium to short haul. And also, they've also given been give granted ETOPS two as well, the E two jet, which means that they now have 120 minutes, um, uh, which means that they can divert to, uh, they can. Uh, operate on longer routes um, at, well actually when I say longer routes um, uh, more direct routes it should be said look at that beautiful aeroplane look at the wing tips on it Steve Stibbons, yeah, you should know him. What? Oh, is it? Was I completely wrong about Oregon? And oh, okay, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Portland is in Oregon. Sorry, <laughs> but it's Washington State, not Washington. There's two things in there. Yes, I know, but isn't Oregon and Washington State in the same sort of area? Yeah, thank you, thank you. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. No, I know it's okay. Maybe it's not in Washington State, but it's, it's sort of like you know, um, up in the green, green hills of wherever. Beautiful part of the world. 
Mammoth Mountain's um, nowhere near it. <laughs> I'll just get me coal. Yeah, Washington DC is obviously, uh, we know where that is, that's where the president lives, isn't it? But Washington State is up north uh, where, um, where uh, uh, Mammoth Mountain is as well, isn't it? It's a sort of like seattle -y sort of like um, part of the world, isn't it? Seattle's in Washington State, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all down that that that, that West End side. West End, Western side. <laughs> oh yeah, Mammoth Mountains, California, but it's all like the, yeah, San Francisco y sort of like <laughs> I'm going further and further, deeper and deeper and I just 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 park it there Jerry mate just park it there so get out and walk clunk clunk Alan Shadbolt, he's right, you know. It does sort of like have that Boak look about it, the old uh, China Southern livery, doesn't it? Flipping out, no point in getting me a world map. I don't even know where the Occam hold is. <laughs> Thank God for Waze, is all I can say. <laughs> I was terrible before all that came out, A to Z and all that. I sometimes actually question how I managed to get, when I used to drive all the way to Scotland, when I used to go racing mountain bikes and going all the way to Wales and all that before. Well, yeah, but you know, even so, you still got to use a map and all that, you know. For computers and all that sort of thing, before we had any of that, like, you know, luxury of, you know, just typing in a postcode and bosh, off you go. I love it, man, I love it. <laughs> Very funny, Debbie. Yeah, pretty good with 
from, you know, no, I'm not going to say anything. I'll just, just shut up, John. Just shut up. Just accept it. Just take it as it is. Stockholm's in Sweden, everybody knows that. Told you. I just, I just asked for it. Oh, did I get it right? Blimey. Flipping heck. How did that work out? One of my favourite 350 liveries, that. Plane. Yeah, good looking jet. I like that cheap line. It's very Boac esque, isn't it? Don't ever change that livery of China. China Southern. Sorry. Flight. Oh no, sorry, ATR 42. Oh, yeah, you can see him throttling back there, man. Look at that. How cool was that? Stuart BOAC was dissolved on this date in 1974. Wow. Well, there we go. Merged, I think, is the better. Uh, yeah, merged with BEA, wasn't it? Uh, to form British Airways. But yes, I guess the, the whole thing was dissolved. I said ATR 42, didn't I? 30% still on the battery, three and a half hour check. 30 minutes. Thank you. 
買うかなおおおおおおおThey m a t t e r thought the buzz was real. What's her name? Virginia p a y n e Poor old tree, 9 1 1 All her up.、Um, all her pitos are covered over. All the, uh. sensors taped over as well. Like, reminds you of the pandemic, doesn't it? All that kind of stuff. She ain't got no engines, man. It's quite rare to see that, though, it has to be said. Oh. Oh, really? In ten minutes? Oh, that's. Folks, we've got、um, we've got a BA380 going to be our.、Um... Oh, no. Okay, BA and Emirates 380、um, due to depart soon. Kelvin Grant, is that Virgin Jet still waiting on? Well, not new engines. Well, they probably will be quite new by the time they come back, but not sure what the history is.、Um, may just be、um, engine servicing. I, I, that's definitely a long term park, isn't it?、Um, normally, I have to say, normally when, a, when an aircraft、um, has an engine issue, they've usually got spare engines. To, to replace、um, the engines with, whilst those engines are off being repaired or serviced or overhauled or whatever it might be. I'm just quite surprised to see that jet parked up there、um, for so long、uh, because that's costing them a fortune、uh, with it not being operational.、Um, because that aircraft was, you know, these aircraft are booked in for, for, for months in advance in terms of their, their operational use. So,、um, what Virgin are using in the meantime, whether they, you know,、um, luckily had one of their older aircraft still operational before it retired, I don't know.、Um, it's, it's, it's hard to say, but、um, yeah,、uh, it can't be a good thing to have an aircraft parked up for that length of time,、uh, not being operational. Dimitri Spirou,、uh, Cafe 747 landing in eight minutes at Paris Charles de Gaulle. James Dayton, GF fan, has been sat at Heathrow since December 1st. So there we go.
So I was still 59 when that aircraft last flew. Oh, thank you, plane spotter. So the, um, what you're seeing there is the engines are missing, literally. Um, the, 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 the only part that is on that aircraft are the what are called the core cowls, which are the, um, uh, the, the, the mid-section cowls on the, on the jet. Can't give you an example. If you look at that, um, if you look at that jet over there, you can see the, uh, the core cowl is the middle segment of that. When the, um, the fan casing is normally attached to the engine itself as well so you know they can either dismantle the engine um, take the core cowling uh, sorry leave the core cowling on uh, take the reverser doors the panels the sliding doors that are on the back part of the engine the uh, the scalloped shaped sections that you can see on the back of the engine that's uh, a replace a removable um, part which is the part that slides back to uh, to 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 open up and um, use the uh, the reverser fins uh, and then the front section which is the engine nacelle or nacelle which is the um it has quite a lot of functions the nacelle um, which basically controls the airflow into the engine um, and that's an aerodynamic feature as well of the engine itself uh, and also something that's um, under scrutiny with um, with Boeing at the moment. Um, well, not so much. Yep, I would say with Boeing, um, even though it's 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 more related to the engine than it is uh, the aircraft itself. Is the uh, the heater element, uh, the de-icer element. See that big big silver piece at the front of that engine uh, engine there. That's the uh, the engine nacelle or nacelle, depending on which part of the world you're from. Um, which has some um, heater elements inside it to to stop any ice from forming and being ingested by the engine even though the engine is capable of, uh, of, of ingesting ice through uh, through cloud and so on and so forth but um, the uh, any buildup of ice on the on the inside of that nacelle would obviously uh, disrupt the airflow uh, into the engine and also uh, around the engine as well because uh, you know when you're designing any any anything that moves through the air you need to think of aerodynamics uh, it's not like Formula One where every week they turn up with different uh, winglets or um, you know uh, new um, new features of the wings uh, it has to stay where it is uh, there are obviously modifications blimey oh, right, look at all these flipping flies Class twist. Tingin Airlines 330 is 22 minutes out, heading into London Heathrow. Triple seven two hundred with Rolls Royce engines. It's a wings flexes just beautifully, doesn't it? Oh, is that a, um, is that a uh, rogue arrival, I see, GP? Only a small jet by the looks of it. Something on approach?
So gracious, man. So gracious. And now, ladies and gentlemen, oh, right. go for that, go for that, go for that. Tida, thank you for that. John Davies, wings are based on birds. Indeed they are. In fact, if you study some of the, um, some of the wild bird, birds of prey and um, even the common garden pigeon, um, in the different form, different wing forms, um, you can either look at them in imagery, or you can just type in Google wing profile, bald eagle, um, wing profile, um, buzzard, whatever, crow, pigeon, um, all those. Uh, all, all. Let's face it. At the end of the day, they're the ones that know how to, know best how to fly, don't they? thing in it I'm guessing Jill Perry albatross wings 380 well, it's got a very sort of like bird of prey style to it hasn't it the um, the a380 wing Uh, Gary, yes. Friday shows. Um, we're certainly looking at. Um, we're looking at um, spreading them out a little bit. Um, doing once a month, a first Friday of every month. I think that's what we're kind of looking at for the Friday show. News and discussions. Uh, but not just that. The reaction shows as well. People seem to like. Oh, this is the Pokemon jet, isn't it? Oh, yeah, nice bit of fogging in the engine intakes. Look at that. Wow, look at the vortex coming over the wing, man, from the from the from the engine um, splitters. See that? See that over the wing there? Oh, wow, man, that was crazy. Don't often see that from behind. Um, the vortex generators on the engines, yeah. Um, they're little fins, literally. They're little fins on the engines. Well, they're not small actually; they're quite big. But they basically create 
a vortex to direct the airflow over and above the wing um, because the um, the engine is actually quite a a messy uh, it messes up the airflow the engine so in order to clean up that airflow what they've done you'll see the white trails over the wing see the white trail over the wing there look just above the engine that's from the vortex generators the big uh, blades they look like blades on the wings wow look at this yeah go on son There you go, you can see it. Right, you could for a second there. If you know where you're looking, then uh, you can see it. Hello, big lad. Blood flame wrapped her off to the cinema. That's what it's there. The cinema. <laughs> Chuck ices, peanuts, get them while they're on. smallest scaffolder in Europe. Nine years old that 777 that just went up. There's your Shenzhen jet, part of the um, Hong Kong Airlines group I still think, maybe, I might be wrong. Um, I know there was a uh, big talk of them struggling a few years back but uh, that's certainly changed. Charlie Waterman. We're going to get the BA380. Is that a line up down there with a the BA380 at the front of it? Looks like a big. It looks like a big aeroplane. That does. Eve Hoskins gifted membership. Thank you, Eve. Liam Brogan is nine years a baby for a plane. Actually, it sounds like a long time. I mean, nine years is a big stretch, isn't it? But um, in terms of aircraft age, average age of um, <coughs> BA's 777-200 fleet, for example, is 24 years old. They've got 30 plus. I think it's 35 plus uh, 777 777s in their fleet, and uh, I believe. I'm right in saying that the average age of the 777 in the BA fleet is around about 24.4 years old. So nine years old is young in comparison, that's for sure. Aviation 4K, uh, uh, GV who I was just looking at with some late sevens. There's one grounded at the moment, GF fan, yep. And there she is over on the left-hand side of the field. Uh, she gets moved on a daily basis, literally. I guess that uh, Singapore 380 has been repaired. Has she? Has she flown back? Is she gone? Uh, smallest scaffolder in Europe, BA11. The 380 is still at gate. Okay. 
Oh, Lloyd Bell, 40 on triple seven two hundreds. Wow. Screaming Emmy was BA the triple seven launch customer. I think so. I think it was the joint launch customer with maybe American Airlines or something like that. I'm not sure, but um, certainly BA were uh, the launch customer or part of the launch process with the triple seven. And of course, uh, the first batch of triple sevens that came uh, to BA were powered by the General Electric GE90 engine, which very quickly caused them issues uh, and they then went with the Rolls-Royce power plant um, before General Electric managed to solve their issues. Um, not sure of the whole story around that but I just know that the launch aircraft was powered um, by the uh, General Electric. Uh, whether uh, uh, Rolls-Royce were already involved in um, producing and presenting and manufacturing an engine on the 777 um, as an option. It might have been that uh, BA went with GE just for whatever reasons it might be because of their uh, fan blade, um, because it's a carbon fan blade, a lighter engine, more efficient, etc, etc. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but um, it's, uh, it, it is a story that you need to read up on. L1011 727 landed next to MD82. Okay. Uh, Aaron Thomas, there are still some DC3s, and yes, of which one or two we will see at Anchorage. Um, both the um, uh, modified type um, with the um, turboprop engine, uh, but also. Um, one or two with the uh, is it the right cyclone engine or the um, Hercules engine on the um, on the DC3 uh, Robert Shepard triple seven first flight was 1994 so none older than 30 years old I'm also pretty sure United was the launch customer in 95 Okay, so none older than 30 years old, okay. Where did I read that then, 34 years old, uh, on an average? 24 years old, didn't I say? Not 34. Did I say 34 or did I say 24? I don't know. It's 24. United was the launch customer, Ian Jay, uh, along with British Airways, I think. I knew it was an American, one of the American carriers. There we go. See, John Davis has got it. I rely on you guys to give me information that you get from Flight Radar 24 or just from knowledge that you have um, because uh, I want you to interact. I don't want to spoon feed you, give you loads of like, you know, uh, people come in here, they get involved, they tell me what's going in, what's coming in, going out, um, you know, all different um, uh, um, news on aircraft, um, taxi, overhead, cruisers, that kind of thing. Always love to get that and like your interaction with the whole thing as well. Raptor X, BA usually flies the 787 and or 777 to Singapore. Yeah, flying the 380 tonight. That means they must have an aircraft either out of circulation or a, um, a high capacity of passengers on board the, uh, uh, you know, on board uh, opting for this flight tonight.
Okay. Yeah, I think we're all excited to see the triple seven nine in uh, in all its glory. I mean, we've obviously seen it at the air shows. Uh, I've seen it up close. I've shown you guys the aircraft up close. How big the engines are. Uh, everything is just ginormous on the uh, on the triple seven nine. Um, but it may be some years yet before she flies commercially, which is uh, a great shame because they've they look like uh, abandoned well abandoned planes really uh, with no engines on them dotted around the, the airfield at Painfield where we went and saw them in all their green glory yeah look at this Yeah, just got that man. Beautiful, yeah. Look at the flex on that wing, mate. Wow. Long run. Wow. Eve Hoskin, United was the triple seven launch customer, still flying some of the oldest triple seven two hundreds in service. Yeah, we see a couple of them here, don't we? The Pratt and Whitney powered as well. The uh, United triple seven two hundreds, didn't they? So they stay well clear of the uh, Rolls Royce and the um, General Electric power plant. Lovely old things. I love seeing the uh, United Triple Seven Twos. See them here at Heathrow on a regular basis. Getting a bit long in the tooth now though, man. And of course, you know, this is um, a lot of these older aircraft are in service as a result of the, the delays in, 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 in uh, deliveries and, and production and raw materials for the, uh, for the engine, uh, for the aircraft manufacturers, um, the airframers, uh, as well as the engine manufacturers as well. Um, hard times for the industry, it has to be said. Avro Arrow, will Lake Hood be ice free during your April trip? I think so. Seem to remember last time we were there in April last year, um, we did get some um, seaplane action. Oh, uh, some DC3s do indeed have the right motor. Jones 
some great turbulence over the equator over the Gulf of Guinea when I flew back on BA's uh, Mike Echo last month and the 777 made light work of it. There we go. Fantastic Gethin. Screaming in a 777 documentary. I missed that. Where's that? What? Well, he's obviously in America, isn't he? So, uh, what channel? Was it? No. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have another go at that. Thank you for that screaming, Amy. I'll have a look at that. It was on Amazon, I believe. Spotlight, uh, Spot Flight Live uh, is telling us that the BA380 has pushed back. That's our closeout, folks. Triple Seven Lenny Wingflex never ceases to amaze him. Uh, Mike Delta 11 has gifted five memberships. Thank you, Mike Delta 11. Um, and of course, all those folks that are currently being gifted memberships are going to be joining us. Um, next month in um, in uh, Anchorage. What's my name again? <laughs> Triple seven, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred. Uh, Kelvin Grant. Don't know about the four hundred, my old mate. Uh, I don't think there is a four hundred variant of the Triple Seven, is it? Um, two hundred and three hundred. I think you'll find. Yeah! So, as we wait, as the clock ticks down, for the 380. Dan the man, Eric Tida, Tianjin Airlines 330 about to land. Oh, blimey. Um, I'm way back on the comments there. About half an hour ago that happened. Uh, Mike Delta 11's gifted five, um, um, five memberships. Thanks, mate. And Rob Van Roy has gifted a membership. Thank you, Rob. Wonderful people you are. Um, is that new livery Emirates behind the Qantas? Um, I didn't look. I don't know. Is it? I've seen one here before. Do Saf. I love dust to part see from Jimmy and Gillian. Hopefully, Gizmo. Who the hell's Gizmo? The dog. Okay. Oh, his dog. Okay. There we go. Uh, Cheryl Howard saying thanks for the cover of BA85 today. I told Paul to tell the crew that we got them to number one on Flight Radar 24. That's brilliant. Um, but just don't tell her that I got her name wrong, please. And he's got a light outlet. He's got one of his lights out. It's a simple fix in it. Uh, left hand side, the port side. Um, yeah. It's always quite embarrassing when I get things wrong like that. People's names. One shouldn't assume. Just like Jilly said. Uh, Niklaus Twist. BA380 is on the taxiway straight ahead. Just about there she is. Thank you. Very grainy shot of London Heathrow. Straight forward, looking forward to Anchorage. Uh, 
And as always, uh, our long haul trips overseas, um, all European trips are uh, for all members. Of course, our international trips, as it says on your membership um, perks, first class and super class members. Um, we do get a lot of people who switch to first class just for the month, just to uh, to watch the 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 the, um, the overseas, the international shows. Then they can switch back, obviously, to premium membership if they wish. Um, premium members will get to see. Uh, the uh, long haul shows one week after they've been streamed live so you will get to see them eventually but if you want to join us live uh, <coughs> then uh, you will obviously need to switch to first class John 47459 is a brand new member with first class good day to you my friend hope you're doing well Matt Hall, my subwoofers are loving this, these departures, wow. That's so cool, isn't it, yeah. Nothing better than, you know, experiencing just not just the visuals, but also the sounds as well. And that's why we've spent, you know, we're, we're so anal about um, our audio. It's so important to, uh, to us in terms of its, you know, uh, clarity and also the bass. The sound of the beats. Superfly Steve, favourite location, Anchorage. Plane spotter BHX, welcome. Brand new member to Big Jet TV, Scott Thompson. Thank you. What's that? Is that Kyle asking if we're streaming tomorrow? There is a plan to Kyle. Not sure what time. Just want to have a bit of a, you know, a bit of a lazy morning if I can, if that's all right. Um, and then we'll just see how we go, progress during the day, in terms of doing something with you guys. Whether it's from the garden, whether it's where where, where it might be from, we don't know. Um, but uh, we'll hopefully um, join you tomorrow. Uh, on your Monday uh, holiday uh, here in the UK. Melanie, because of Anchorage shows, I booked a trial flight in a seaplane when we were in Seattle. He loved it. I went in one on, in Vancouver. Wow. Some of those seaplanes are like from the 1950s, man. tweeting and the cat meowing. <laughs> yeah, you don't usually get the two in the same sentence, do you? Fly SSC, thank you so much. Take care. Have a good evening. Last plane we're waiting for, folks, is the A380. BA380 going to um, Singapore, believe it or not. Um, normally operated using 777 or 787. So it must be capacity, I'm imagining, um, is the reason. Stevie B has upgraded to first class. Nice one, Steve. Uh, Jennifer Hutchinson. Yes, I have watched a few videos uploaded by, um, well, various people on the 1950s. I uh, love those old videos, man. Uh, especially the ones that have been digitized. Oh, 
Oh, birdie, birdie. In the Netherlands, we have a second Easter day. I've got Scott Bateman calling me. <laughs> Why have I... Let me... I'll call you back, Julie. His final, was it his final was into San Diego or something like that? In Manila, yes, um, primarily 380 operations, yeah, with Lufthansa Technic. Two new schedules for tomorrow. You little cockles in there. Oh, okay. Pre-pandemic, calling to Hodgie, it was uh, it was 380 and 777. Sorry. This is him rolling now. Looks like a four end ginger. Oh, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, we're just, just about going to get this, aren't we? Is this it? Is this it? This is your curtain call, folks. Tracy Younger, take care. Thank you, everybody. Been a great day, great afternoon with you. Um, we will be about tomorrow. If you want to come and join me, whether it's in my garden or uh, wherever it might be. She's all lit up, man. She's screaming and all set that way. Beautiful. What a way to finish a show, man. Yeah. Take care, folks. Look after yourselves. Stay tuned for updates. We're going to do a show tomorrow. Don't know where. Don't know when. But look out for it. Take care, folks. All the best. Have a good evening wherever you are. Stay safe, stay well and stay happy.